and if you look at all the deployments what we have done for us the concept is how do we get milestone at the center how do we ensure that everything happens via the smart client uh and, and another very important use case is whenever an event happens how do i show it immediately on the dashboard and how do i actually go and see what happened during the event client. that is possible. and that is what we are doing so all information are now coming in right into milestone using these lora opc ua backnet snmp plugins o insight like what do we have what do we add to this and how do we complement so this is where what we are what we are talking about so we have the agile workspace so the first wherein you can every smart client user or every milestone user can have his or her own personalized view of dashboards widgets which can be moved around scada smart sensor so this is a big uh, push we have seen for a lot of uh, deployments what we have done is you have milestone working perfectly well you have a scada you, how do you have both this information kind of talking to each other and that is where all our plugins have kind of helped and kind of solve that uh, piece of the puzzle advanced report so now that you have all this information coming into milestone how does a facility head who is there who is kind of not been sitting next to the milestone get to know an alert they get to know what is the uptime of the systems every week every day every month so we have those advanced reporting features now which are there which can be scheduled and emailed and enabling compliance so most of the deployments where we are done the key driving factor here is how do the systems remain compliant so we not only have kind of generate those reports we not only visualize the information but we also have those bulk changes wherein you can kind of to action reports so based on new sops based on your existing sops you can know at any point of time whether you are compliant and then you can immediately do that moving ahead this is the overall uh, solutions what we have so we have the o insight slider which is a carousel view for sequencing the milestone views the backnet opc plugin for bidirectional transfer of alarms and events with any scada which supports these we have the loravan snmp plugin so any U ups traps hard disk failures so all those traps can now come in inside milestone from a loravan perspective smart cities smart bins panic alarms anything which is even battery operated with the loravan protocol you can have all that information coming in we have the o connect wherein for any notification where you want to send it externally so let's say you have a loitering alarm in milestone you have a camera failure in milestone how do you send this notification out as an sms as an email as an app as a whatsapp or even a call so we have connectors there for that and finally the o insights agile workspace dashboards uh, advanced reports and we also closely work with the lpr milestone lpr engine and have customized reports out of that moving ahead so what what we have seen as we are working with uh, like i would say multiple use cases and the way it's going is wherever you have integration from smart cities from scada generally what we have seen is slowly there is a push where milestone goes in the background and the scada comes into the foreground so that's what we are trying to change here and if you look at all the deployments what we have done for us the concept is how do we get milestone at the center how do we ensure that everything happens via the smart client and that is what we are doing so all information are now coming in right into milestone using these lora opc ua backnet snmp plugins at the same time you can visualize it in the smart client itself so all these use cases from smart cities to in any industry vertical you see we can now get all this information into milestone <laughs> going ahead uh, i mentioned about the focus on the robust reporting engine what we have so you can actually automate schedule any reports out of the milestone system so how many cameras were up what is my retention period which of the uh, events have taken place from a loitering intrusion perspective what are the health status which is my firmware are there so all this information you can not only report out as a pdf excel csv but you can also email them you can schedule those emails automatically and uh, 
specifically for LPR, we have uh, advanced reports for that too. And 100 plus kinds of reports which can be generated now from Milestone. And uh, taking it one step ahead, we not only can report out of all this information, but we also do something called as taking action on the report. So we can run a report which talks about compliance. So let's say, for example, here we're talking about number of storages which for the retention period. So you can run a report, you can find out about that, and in case you have a change in SOP and you want to take action on that, you can immediately take an action. And this is what we're going to uh, show you during the demo too. So bulk changes of passwords, resolution, frame rates, all that is possible now. Now, once you have all this information coming in into Milestone, how do you visualize that? So we have seen partners taking information from fire alarm systems into Milestone, and then using your own Milestone maps, you can kind of put in an image of your floors, buildings, and then you can put in the fire alarm detectors. If it is a LoRa sensor, you can put in the LoRa sensors, leak sensors, temperature value. So using the maps, smart maps, you can actually visualize all that information. And these are different views of uh, your very own smart client. So using the Agile Workspace plugin, we have dashboards for smart cities, for hospitalities, various use cases across domains uh, which are there. And this is entirely widget-based Agile. So every user can have their own look and feel. From a deployment perspective, across verticals, across domain, 15 plus domains, we have kind of deployed the use cases for reports uh, with regards to agile workspace, as well as getting all that information in. It's being catered to because each of these domains have specific niche requirements. So all that being catered to. All right. So this is uh, the Oinsights plugin. I think the latest version running on this on this on this smart client. And uh, currently we support uh, close to 35 odd widgets. So the widget libraries, we, every release, we kind of uh, improve on that, give uh, more useful information. So I think we have last time, I think we have seen the online, offline uh, count widgets, right? So now what we have done is we have taken it one step ahead. Now, let's say there were some use case wherein you're looking at cameras, offline, for a particular make of a camera or a camera online offline for a particular floor of a building or a particular area you can do all that now because we are supporting different types of uh, ways we can kind of uh, break the cameras by location by type so all that available now so you can actually see the status of your cameras however you want to look at it you no know? all these uh, multiple options given to you right now yeah so save this we also throw up a lot of more uh, security based information based on your audit information, uh, how many camera passwords are viewed, how many login counts happening, all that now can be visualized in the dashboard very easily. Uh, another very important use case is whenever an event happens, how do I show it immediately on the dashboard and how do I actually go and see what happened during the event? That is possible with this event widget where you can actually tag any event in the milestone you know, event uh, uh, camera configuration. And as soon as the event occurs, you know, you can have a count going up and then you can click on it and then you can actually go and play the feedback of what happened during this event. So it's like very easy uh, option to kind of navigate and do do your do your uh, you know uh, analysis on what happened uh, at that time yeah and a lot of such things another another uh, widget what we added is a weather widget we had a lot of requests for that so we can now we have an integration with the open weather api and now we can actually show your live weather in your current location along with the forecast for the you know you can choose the number of days uh, you want to see ahead so uh, a more information, you know, uh, which we have we're getting in. Another another uh, 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 perspective in the dashboard is we can now create multiple dashboards, right? You don't need to just have one dashboard, but you can actually go to your workspace settings and you can create multiple dashboards like the way we have configured here. You can kind of uh, arrange it the way you want, and everything here can be exported and input to another user's profile. So 
very easy to kind of configure and very easy to share and creating multiple dashboards for you know the way you want to organize your data. So that's what we're enabling with this uh, multi workspace. I'll show you how about the reporting. I think uh, uh, this is something we introduced in in 4.0 and this thing in reports what the concept what you have is any data in milestone can now be converted into a user defined report you know with the very specific uh, customization such as logos your color font header footer you can customize everything so this is how it works you have multiple folders you can create your own folder you can you can organize your reports well you can just create a folder and, and within different folders you can create reports we support various data sources so i'll just go through some of them audit is pulling data from your audit information from milestone alarm data camera details showing you all the camera properties the camera health which is a very popular report which tells you what is the uptime of each of my camera in the system whether it has gone down how long it has gone down for things like that and camera status count this is like a, a report which tells you at any at any point in time how many cameras are offline and how many cameras are online and recording servers as well so that's like a snapshot high level view of your system health we do devices, so any devices can be reported on right now. Disabled devices, so in case you want to know how many cameras are disabled or how many microphones are disabled, you can do that as well. Any events, we have an audit, we have a report for any events in Milestone. Recording server health, like just like the camera health, we know we can anytime a recording server goes down, comes up, we tell you how long it was down, uh, you know, how many times it went down during a period you, you run a report for and things like that. Storage report, uh, you can uh, very important report to understand whether you are getting close to your thresholds, whether you are in the you know you're, you're in the green, you're in the orange, the red. So you can do all that in, in storage reports. And finally, access control events. So you know any access control data coming in can be reported out as well. So I'll take an example of uh, maybe the alarm alarm report, and I'll show you how it looks. So if once you create a data source, right, you can give it you give it a name. Uh, you can give it any name you want. You can choose the time range where you want to pick this data from. So we have various options. You can also uh, choose a custom range of time. You give it a number, you give it a template. The template is where we act can actually customize the logos and all the footers information. And then you choose the, 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 the columns, right? So what columns of the alarm data do I need in my report? You can choose all, and we expose pretty much everything what is there in Milestone. You can choose your, your the columns you need. If you want to kind of rename it something else in your column, in your report, you can do that. You can kind of realign it. You, you have all the flexibility here. And once you do that, you can you actually you can create filters, right? So if you want to, let's say I have a, a duration, I add alarm duration, and then once you create a, your 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 columns or your or your properties, you can actually start filtering on them. So if you want to show, give me all reports which alarm duration is greater than X amount of minutes, you can do that. So this report is the only pull data which has got this filter enabled here. Yeah? So that's the way we, by combining the columns or the or the fields, properties of the data source, as well as the uh, the filters, you can pretty much answer any question you have with reports. Okay, just like like Roy said. So if let's say if you want to run a report for access cameras, we don't have the latest version. So you put a firmware version equal to not equal to this, manufacturer equal to access, and you get all the access cameras which don't have that make, and that's how you can report out on. Yeah. And once you do the report, you have an option to schedule it. This can run uh, based on uh, schedules. We have minutes, hour, daily, weekly, monthly. You can do all those options we have. And uh, once you schedule it, uh, it, once it runs, you can also email it out. You can set an email email address of the recipients for this e for this report. And uh, you can also save to the drive as a PDF, CSV, or Excel. So we support three formats here. So. To show an example of an alarm report uh, we we uh, done so and every time it runs it records so if you see if i click on the view it shows you all the runs of the report it was cancelled it shows cancelled and you don't have to go to any file folder or go to any emails to check your reports come here you can search also based on time you get to see all the reports and to see the data of the report you just click on the on the on the open button and the report opens right there yeah so it's everything is in just one place in smart land you can do everything now yeah this is a report which shows you anything you know, timestamp, source, message, so information about the alarms. Okay. In OInsights, we can also do uh, certain cyber cyber security checks, and weak password is 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 a very powerful uh, uh, check we have. So, in case any commonly used passwords or any default passwords with cameras are 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 set for cameras, we catch here. Okay. And this is where we actually have this concept of action report. So let's say you know you run a report and you you know you have a problem. Okay, you have an access camera which kind of is not compliant because it's got a weak password. So we have an option called action report. You can take action right here. So I just click on action report and I say you know what I want to change the password of this camera. 
I want to put a I, I'm going to put a strong password. And then I say update and that's it. Action reports will take care of go and pushing this change into milestone and then milestone will push it into the camera and you have a compliant camera, right? So that easy. So we call it the, you know, your uh, report, analyze, remediate. The, the cycle completes right here. So when you run an action report, it comes in the, we have an action reports uh, pane. Where the actual report runs, it shows you all the runs of the report. So we just ran a password uh, change right now and it shows success and it tells you uh, it, the password is old and new and it was done, right? So it tells you the report was pushed or not to a milestone, yeah. And the beauty of this reporting is, is and the way the workspace works is any report which is run here can now be the the results of the report can now be shown in the in a in a in a dashboard. So I just show you an example how that works. Let's say let's say we have a storage report, okay, and uh, we're going to create a storage report here, and we're going to uh, highlight storage which are you know at a very low uh, storage uh, available space, okay. So we're just choosing some columns. We are giving a filter. So filter, we say available percentage less than say 30%. Okay, and then we run the report. The report runs, and uh, if you see the result of it, it comes here. And you have one camera. Okay, and this report can be scheduled to run every day. So you know, or maybe every hour. You can you can schedule that. And let's say I want to highlight this in my art in my a dashboard I create, okay, and there if we want to kind of showcase this data there, we can do that. So I'm just going to show you how that works. So I just add a widget for this report I'm 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 interested in, and I just kind of choose that report. And if you see, it shows a value right there. You know, I have one one storage which is off, uh, not uh, compliant with my with my my policy I have. And then which one is that? I can drill down and show me which one right there. So that's how we enabled you know, the workspace, making very powerful with reporting uh, uh, there at the back, giving it the data it needs to show. Yeah. So the maps is where we have a, a beautiful integration with maps. So if you look at the map, you can actually now start. Showing those values, all these values are now coming from uh, either of those 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 the three four protocols, right? And these sensors are now what we can do is we can define colors or icons for a normal condition and a different icon for a abnormal condition like an alarm. So you can do that, and as soon as there is an event happening in your building, your 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 the operator who is actually even looking at cameras can actually see that information not only in the alarm manager but also in this in his in the maps. If you see, if we have some alarms going out on the on this on this on the screen. So I will just quickly show you the, the how the OPC, uh, the new version of OPC, how we can kind of integrate with uh, Milestone and you can actually go and uh, change presets. So if you notice now with the latest version of OPC, you can do a lot more than what was happening earlier where it was pure event transfer and I think user defined events triggering. But now for every camera, you can actually now you have the presets. We show you all the presets and you can actually go to any preset you want to go. You can also change the preset, uh, the PTZ positions, all that is possible. So just to... If you see now the camera has moved, right? It's fired. We triggered a, a, a preset in, in mm -hmm. an OPC client and immediately the smart client, uh, you can see the camera changing its positions. Yeah. So. That's what I think. Uh, I think we just discussed earlier in the in the, in the PowerPoint. We, you can do control of PTZ positions and as well as going to presets, right? So you can do all that now in in OPC way. Yep.